Okay, good morning. It's about three minutes after, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome you to the uh, intro to the new ADP portal training. Uh, the training will be pretty much divided into two sections. The first part, we're actually going to go through and focus on the login and the employee, uh, how the employee would enter information. And then in the second section, we will focus more on managers and uh, time approval and, and approval of time off requests and manager functions. So uh, we will start with the login screen. Um, it's the new um, URL is workforcenow.adp.com. And when you enter that, it'll get to the screen. Uh, one of the things I would like to discuss for first-time users, those that might be, have never logged in, uh, you'll click here at this register here button. Uh, there are, um, basically the registration code is something you'll get emailed from payroll. And then that will be something you'll use there. And there will be more specific details on the hub for first-time users. This button down here is if you've forgotten your username or password. Uh, it's actually very, very intuitive, uh, very easy to use. You'll be using uh, your first name, last name, and email address. When you click on Next, it'll ask you, you know, is this the ID that you want to be connected to? Um, it's much nicer than the old program. Uh, there's still some steps you have to walk through for verification, but for the most part, it's working okay. Um, it's working actually really well. So, so we'll go back to this first screen, and you'll uh, log in as the user. One of the things I'd like to point out, these are some of the common mistakes we, we get with people contacting us, and the most common one is this digit at the very end of the login. Um, it, it is an I, stands for International for Colliers International, but <clears throat> it sometimes looks like an L or a 1. Uh, so it's uh, your fir usually your first initial and then your last name at Call Your Zai. Then the password would be case sensitive. Um, and so we'd go ahead and log in. Um, so it takes you, the first landing page is called a message center. Uh, it's basically any messages that you may be communicated to you. We'll discuss those a little bit more later. Uh, for employees, there will not be very many. For managers, you may see more. Um, but let's start at the home page because this is kind of a, we've simplified it, made it very compact right in the middle. Um, there's the My Time Card button, which can take you straight to My Time Card, your time card. Uh, we have also requested from ADP that we add the accruals. So you can see your accrual balances on this front page. Um, and then we're also asking that your, there be a link to your pay statements. So three of the main sections that are going to be accessed by the employee uh, will be right here on the home page. And they'll, they should be able to maneuver fairly quickly and go straight to them. Um, there are some uh, links here that will take you to the hub or to some ADP training. Um, but those are the main components of the home page. Up here, this is going to be your main navigation bar. Uh, so for employees, you will have home and you will have myself. You will not have my team and reports. For employees only, it will just say home and myself. You click on myself and then there's some submenus here. Uh, we are kind of going to go through an order just to cover each one. Uh, we'll start with the personal information. So you come down to personal information and over to personal profile. <clears throat> uh, when we start on personal profile, it is basically what you would expect. It's got your name. It's got your specifics. Now, as you can see, things are X'd out here. You do have the ability to reveal them. Uh, this is kind of an added security thing in case somebody's with you when you're looking at it. It does cover up information such as over here. You can see that it's X out most of your social security number. You can also reveal that. Um, it's got addresses, and it's got your emergency contact information. These are all things you can look in and check and see whether or not these are correct information and, and maybe something you would want to update. You can also go down to employment. And as you can see, when you click on the submenu, there's two additional menus over here. We'll start with the employment profile. 
this is information more directed towards your actual work. Uh, so your title will be right here at the beginning under position. Uh, your supervisor's name, who your direct report for supervision is there. Um, you can see that uh, there's a lot of employment data, uh, even down here, your, your group that you're in and your location. Um, <clears throat> your regular pay will also show up on the screen. So um, mine is zeroed out here. But your pay will show there, and uh, it'll show your standard hours if you are a salaried employee. So if you keep going, Back to employment and time position info. This actually is just a real quick, this is your time card approver. <clears throat> so if you look there, my supervisor here on this one would just be, this is who approves my time card. These other ones are not so much used, but it's, it's basically designates your time zone, like your hire dates and additional rates. Under the pay tab, this is where you would go to actually view a lot of your statements. Um, as you can see, annual statements, I can click on that one because it'll take you to a link here for each year that you have a W-2. You can actually click on that year and you can view your W-2 here. You can do the same thing for any previous years. Now here's kind of an important thing that I like. Every year we get con um, notifications or people asking when are the W-2s ready. You can actually click on this and you can sign up for email alerts that when the W-2s are put onto the website, you'll get an email stating that they're ready for view. So that way you don't have to wonder anymore. Um, also down under pay, you go to calculators. So with these calculators, these actually will take you to a third party site. So these are not actually connected to your specific pay. But if you ever wanted to say, hey, I want to know if I get a raise and I want to put in this much money, um, if I want to add 401k, there's, this will take you to a site where you can kind of play with uh, the figures. It's a pretty good site. I believe it's called Paycheck City. Um, there's also some 401k planner. These are all third parties. These are not Collier sites. These are not ADP sites. They take you to third parties, but they are kind of helpful to use as tools. And it actually will tell you this is designed as a tool and it's not an ADP secure. You're leaving ADP site. So after pay and calculators, there's direct deposit. We'll cover a couple of things here. Um, the major things that happen. Uh, as you can see, it's all X'd out except for the last four more security issues. Um, if you want to add a brand new direct deposit account, you would click Add, and it would ask you all the bank information, whether it's a checking or savings account. Right here, if you want all of your net pay to go into it um, after any other deductions or any other direct deposits, you would click on this full deposit button. Um, if it's not a full deposit, you need to designate an amount. You would then put in your bank information. Um, they kind of give you a hint on how to read your checks here, if you want to use checks uh, to get the information. You then have to click the button down here to say that you understand everything that you've just entered and hit done. So that's for a brand new one. Uh, I would like to point out two different areas. If you want to delete you would just click in the box and delete that account. If you want to change just the amount for these accounts, you can go in and you can just change the amount here. And then you can you know, click this button, hit done, uh, and that just changes the amount. Uh, it's actually a very easy change. Now, one error that we do see kind of commonly is this right here is the one with the net pay amount. These have specific amounts going into them. This one is the one with the net pay. If you need to change this account, you need to delete it first and then add a brand new one. Uh, that's kind of important. It creates issues for uh, people when they're trying to make changes. So that's very important as far as timing. You must delete first and then add a new one. Um, if we go back up to myself and pay, this is actually your tax withholdings. You are able to change your filing status. Right now I have single zero. If I wanted to click on federal, it would take me in and say, what would you like? I could change it to married six and hit save, and I could move on. Um, state withholdings uh, would need to be sent into the U.S. payroll at colliers.com. 
uh, at this time. But it only allows federal. So uh, this next one, I can't actually click on it. Unfortunately, we don't have a test environment, so it's live data. Um, but the pay statements, it will show you a list of your checks. You can go in and you can view your checks. You can view the check detail. Um, it's, it goes on um, for as long as you've been in Colliers and it actually would have information from if you had any previous employment with companies that used ADP, your pay statements could also be on there. Um, again, with exactly like with the W-2s, you can actually sign up for notifications of pay statements as well. Um, and so exactly like this section here, if you click on the select notification options, it'll ask you, you know, do you want to receive it via text or do you want it via email? Um, so you can get your pay statement and you can know when your pay statements are available for view. And as a rule, they're available the day prior to check date. So if we get paid on a Friday, then you should be able to see them on a Thursday. That way you can see them the day before. Um, so that is covering everything with pay. Let's go to time and attendance. And here is where most of you will be accessing most often. Um, I would say this first entry, <clears throat> I would save you time by just skipping it because it's, it basically takes you to a, another place to click on My Time card. So uh, as far as the My Time entry one, I would suggest skipping it and just going to My Time card to get to your time card or ac accessing it from the front page. The load times are a little longer with this version, but uh, overall, I, am, I would say it's, it's more robust and gives us more options. So uh, I, instead of clicking around, uh, I've seen many people need to wait a few more seconds um, just to be sure that everything is loaded correctly. Um, so with time cards, now my view here, I have to point out a couple of things. My view, uh, I enter total hours per day. Some people will enter a start time and an end time, and uh, we can cover more of that later. I can actually, I'm going to go into a different screen and show you how that's done. Uh, but the, the layout is slightly different. The columns are in a different order, but it still is the same. Um, it's still the day of the week, um, the pay code we use. So you can actually access the pay codes by clicking on that, and if you want to enter personal time or if you need to enter sick time for a day that's already passed. You can do that here. And for those of you who enter total hours, you'll just enter total hours. You can change the department that you're allocated to if that's necessary as well. It's split up into weeks now. It used to be one big long uh, page. Now it's, now it's split up into the weeks. Uh, there are uh, some tabs up here that can show you the totals you have entered. Uh, you can also view some time off balances here. I didn't save that, so it's going to ask for confirmation. Um, time off balances are more important kind of when we're entering the time off request, so I will save the time off balances for the next screens. Uh, if you have any, um, any additional information you need to add, you can add a blank row. You can copy the row or you can delete the row. So for some of you, you'll have punch in, punch out, and you'll need two rows. You would just add a row, and it will give you two rows. So you can, if you need to split your day into certain amounts. I am going to switch over here real quick to show you how to enter multiple rows. So I will go to schedule at a glance and actual versus schedule and monthly schedule. These are all basically looking at future, um, like the weeks and what your schedule is for each week. And then monthly schedule is, um, it just gives you a whole month view. You can, some of you use schedules, some of you don't. It's not very common. Um, if you do use schedules or if, you, if you're if you a manager and you want to use schedules, uh, you can contact US Payroll and we will go through and talk about setting up schedules because they are, some managers like them, some managers don't, and they have not been used very often in the past. And it basically is just a listing of what their expected work time is. 
there's also a list of holidays here. Uh, this will be different for some people than what you see on the screen. As some of our client sites have different holidays than, and we follow client sites. But uh, for Collier's Corporates, uh, it's just a listing of this year's, next year's, last year's schedules. And then attendance, um, it's another screen that probably is not used very often, but if you have ex attendance exceptions, I'm sorry, I don't have any to show, but it will show just like time that is taken off. So let's move forward to time off. That way, these are the screens that would be used more often with the time off balances and time off requests. Under time off, we start off with time off or request time off. The screen is actually pretty nice, um, nicer than the previous version in the sense that you can see the month here. You can say, oh, okay, here's what it looks like, and it shows your pay schedules, like when your paydays are, and holidays that uh, month of May and June are pretty nice with all of our holidays. Uh, the balances are right here on the screen. And uh, so if indeed I wanted to take time off on starting on the 20th, if you click just request time off, you've got to enter the dates. But if you start on with the 20th clicked and hit request time off because that's the day you want, it will actually start on that day. Uh, this will come up blank if you don't have a day selected, and you can enter the dates yourself. Uh, a couple of things to note here, if you want to do multiple days, it's not suggested to do multiple different time off periods, but if you want to do one time off period, like for the entire week, then you can put the whole week in there. If you are taking time now and then time in July, it's suggested that you do those as different time off entries in the sense that if there are any changes, the whole time off has to be canceled uh, to change one day, and it's just it's easier to keep the, the individuals separate. So what you, it automatically defaults to vacation. Um, you can pick another one. You can pick sick or personal. Um, but I'm going to leave it at vacation. And then right here, it's kind of tricky. I selected five days. So it's saying five times eight. So you're not going to enter 40 hours. You're actually just going to enter your eight-hour days. Um, it automatically defaults a start time to eight o'clock. Um, it doesn't have to match your schedule. It's something that if your supervisor wants it to match your schedule, they can kind of designate that uh, as long as you – the reason it has a start time is something I'll show you right here. Um, let's say that you're going to use – um, you click on the view multiple days button because you wanted to only use four hours of vacation on Friday. But the other four hours you wanted to use is personal time. So you click over here on this copy date. I changed this to, this to four hours of vacation. Copy date. And I want to do personal time. It, it tells you it's not an invalid amount because you haven't entered any time yet. Um, once you enter that, if you tried to save it here, um, it doesn't let you. This time is the same. It actually needs to be moved so it doesn't overlap. So it takes 8 to 12 because of the four hours. So I would need to do the start time at 12 because it won't let you overlap hours. Um, this here, this please respond by. This is a, a note to your manager, because if you need to buy plane tickets for a trip by a certain day or something like that, you can select that. You can write a comment. It's not necessary, but you can put a comment in there, and you can hit Submit. Um, and as you can see, my calendar has now been updated. This has been sent uh, this Friday over here. You can see it's in two parts. One is vacation, and one is in uh, personal. This has been sent to my manager, uh, and it's basically sent them a time off request asking them to approve the time. The time off request function is limited to only future dates. So today uh, is Friday. If I was sick yesterday and I needed to go in and enter sick time for the day, I could not use the time off request function, uh, even today. If I was going to leave this afternoon, it doesn't let you enter 
the same day. It's only for future dates because it's a process that it's like notifying your manager and their manager approving. They feel that it's only for future dates. That's the limitation of the system. If you had to enter time for previous days of the pay period, you would want to go back into your time card in time and attendance. You go to myself, go to time and attendance, go to my time card. And when your time card comes up, you would actually just go to the ninth, and you would, I just hit S for sick, and enter my eight hours for sick. So this will also, uh, under, under myself and under time off, you can go to time off balances, and it will show you your time off balances here. These are not accruing, so you won't see amounts there. You can also see a list of the open requests or requests you have out there. As you can see, the status of this one is pending. You can filter by status um, or a date range. And it will list all of your outstanding or pending or approved time off requests. So as far as time entry for employees and time off requests for employees and specifically just employee viewing, that's all we have. Um, I am going to unmute the line here, and we are going to open it up to questions for a little bit, and then we will move on to the manager training. Um, what if I want to put in for the vacation I took last month? Is that possible? I'm sorry, I missed the first half, but I think you're asking for anything prior to this pay period. Unfortunately, yeah. um, you would need to go ahead and email us.payroll, and okay. we can make the adjustment onto the time card for you, but as far as for you or your managers, they are unable to actually, you and your manager would una be unable to go back and change anything prior to this pay period, um, but we can make that adjustment so that it's viewed properly. Thank you. Sure. Um, does anyone else have any specific oh. questions about the employee view or time entry? Or I do. Sure. I uh, I went on the site this morning to enter my time card for the past for this week and last week, uh -huh. and I did not have a full two weeks showing. Can you show us how to set up to, to have you know, two I weeks show every time we go in? Yeah, let me, let's take a look at some of those options real quick. So Thank when you. you go into my time card. There are a couple of things that I did want to show there. Um, so when you go up here to the top, there is a um, down here preferences. Now here's a couple of things. For those of you who have multiple days that they want to be able to enter, um, or multiple lines on one day, uh, which is common for those who have to have a lunch punch where they punch out for lunch and then come back in. You'll select this rows per day and go up to two, and that'll give you automatically two rows per day. Um, for the date selection options, it's these are the ones to choose. Now, as far as I was thinking, you were thinking of two line items. If it doesn't show two weeks, I think we may want to look because there's a there's a filter that says this week. So if that's not what caused that for you, I would invite you to go ahead and call me directly afterwards, and I can totally walk through, and maybe we can share your screen. But the filter up here is the only one that I believe controls how many days you see when you um, when you log in. So if it's current pay period, it should show the two weeks. If it doesn't show the two weeks, um, we may want to look into some of your settings on your employee level. Uh, this date selection, it, it's these are just the options that you have available. Um, I mean, if if you well, want to take some of those out for you, but it's that's not really where I ended up going. That's where I went to get the the two weeks to show was the under preferences. Gotcha. Um, so did it actually end up showing the two weeks? Like that was your it default. Did. Okay. Yeah, so, so this week and last week. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and make a call because it's always defaulted to current pay period for 
for my entry, it might revert back to the last thing you went in as, but if you hadn't logged mm -hmm. in before, I don't know, I would go to this current week. Okay. Um, if you take your date selection options and only had current pay period and maybe another one, I would say it could only choose from those, uh, but I would... Um, I would really like for you to maybe call me directly afterwards and we can walk through it and see and if it's something that we need to update, we can we can put that on out on the hub as one of our best practices. Okay. Okay. Can I contact you at US Payroll? Yeah, send it to us.payroll at colliers.com. And we okay. can we can definitely address that issue. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Um, if you go back to the uh, accruals page, yeah. is it going to show somewhere in the week that you just asked to have off? So if we go to time off, um, are we, we, did you want to look at like the actual where your accruals are? No, like, the, where your you accruals are. Already, your accruals. Effect? Okay. So I want to see what it looks like. like. Um, you wanted to, okay, let's go to time off balances on this one. So you see this right here? It shows the pending request separate from your vacation time. Okay, it does show it, okay, because yeah, I thought it, it um, even though it's not approved yet, it shows up. Right. So that's good. Yep. It, so the balance is... <laughs> Before the request is approved, is that what you have left, 109? You know, I, when it's in the pending stage, I'm not 100% sure, but I can go in there and show you how to, so that's 109, and if I go here to my list of requests, I'm going to cancel the request. <clears throat> the request has been canceled. And we can go back into, I think where we're at, my time card. When we viewed that. <laughs> and so the 109 was the balance before it was approved. Once it's been approved, um, it will reduce the balance. Okay. It takes your scheduled time into account. Okay, thanks. Sure. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, in the old system, I, I actually do split my time with the lunch punch. Um, right. It had an out type for lunch punch. I actually couldn't get on what you're viewing. I had trouble. I didn't know the username or password, so I just logged into the site under my, you know, my own personal. I was kind okay. of following that way. And I'm on the time, my time card. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, usually when I do, like, let's say 8.30 to 12 and then I do my lunch punch, I don't see where I would click on lunch punch. It doesn't give me that option. Uh, it pops up pay codes and it gives all the different pay codes, but <laughs> lunch punch. So if that's a requirement from your manager, uh, let me take a look here. Well, is it, I mean, can I just put the full eight hours or would you prefer that we do the lunch punch? I. I the, the lunch punch is required for those who take a lunch, but okay. what I'm more curious about is it's may, maybe not required that you designate that the reason you clocked out is for the lunch. Got it could it. just be an understood. Um, so it, may, it looks like we may not even have that option to actually say lunch punch anymore. Um, and we may talk to ADP and see if we can add that if, if that's something that's needed by the managers. Okay, so how do I know uh, for with regards to um, today's time card that I need to do? Well, with today's time card, uh, you could request from your manager whether or not she require he or she requires it. Okay. Uh, it's not a Collier's policy that you designate your out punch as lunch. Um, if there's a split in the middle of the day, it's kind of assumed for the most part. But right. you know, sometimes there's longer. Like you've got to take two hours and you want to you know mark it as lunch just so they know. Uh, we can we can talk about that with the managers. Uh, I don't believe it's it's required by by any of the managers, but we can okay. follow up with that one. I'll do, I'll ask my manager. Thank you. Sure. So Are salaried employees um, required to fill out a time card? 
the salaried employees are not required to fill out a daily time card. A salaried employees are, they do fill out time when they use what we call exception time. So if you're taking vacation, sick, or personal, uh, okay. you can use the time off request function. Uh, if you take a sick day and it's passed, you can use, enter it straight into your into your time card. So as a salaried employee, you would see it where it's just that total number of days, uh, like I was showing you there, and it would be, um, you would just select, this is actually kind of what yours would look like this period, where all you see is the holiday, for mm -hmm. eight hours, and all the rest of the days would be blank. But yeah. if you needed to take that Friday as a sick day, you would also enter that. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Questions? So we're, go ahead. Do you have to re-register again for the work you now? Should not, you should, should not have to re-register again. It, um, the username and password uh, has worked for most everybody. We have had one or two people say it didn't work. Uh, and if that's happening, you should you should go ahead and contact us directly because we'll probably have to walk you through some troubleshooting. But then also, uh, if I already filled up my time card, on the old system, do I have to redo it then for the new system? If it's already done, no. All that time okay. was carried forward. Great. Thank you. So we're about halfway, so I will have to stop the, the question period for the employee entry. Uh, I'm going to try to have some question time at the end of this one for the managers as well. But everybody is free to contact us.payroll. Um, and if you're not a manager and you'd like to drop off now, uh, this next section is mostly going to be focused towards um, how to approve time and, and time off requests and and that kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put us back on lecture mode and move forward to the, the manager self-service. The leader has turned lecture on and your line will remain muted until the conference leader unmutes your line. And you would do it the same exact way as the employees log on. But you will have these two additional tabs here. You'll have My Team and Reports. So under My Team, <coughs> the first, the top one, is uh, there's a couple of nice things here. Now, Delegate Activities is something that was very rarely used in the old system. It was a little bit hard to find. Um, it's something that has always been there. <coughs> We're not going to cover it in depth, but it is something that if you need to have somebody else cover you while you're on vacation, if you need a secondary approver while you're away, you can actually delegate your activities to someone else. Um, <clears throat> so there's delegate on behalf of, delegate from, but let's focus on delegate. You would actually hit add. You would pick the person that you want to delegate it to. You would search for them, um, and then you would be able to, a, a list comes down of all the things you want to delegate. Most of the time it's just a time card coverage thing and there is a section of um, time and attendance where you can check the box. So if you're on vacation and you're like, oh, it's payroll week, um, I want to delegate it to another one of the managers, then you can do that here. Uh, it can, you can do a start time and an end time. You can do it indefinitely. If, if maybe somebody's going out on leave, they can, they can have a delegate indefinitely because you don't know when you're coming back from leave. Uh, one of the nicer functions that in the old system was there, it was just really hard to find. Org chart is very um, minimal. This technically is only the people listed as your direct reports, not so much people that you approve time guards for. It's only direct reports. Uh, we were talking about maybe taking that section out, so um, it may or may not be there. It's not a uh, vital information at this point uh, for us to be able to see. Um, but we do understand that you also like to know that people are coded correctly. So uh, we will move forward with this little thing here, which is actually really nice. So if you go to My Team and go down to Team Calendar, <coughs> this will show you a calendar for your team. Um, this is actually the current week. Uh, next week, I believe I... <coughs> Here's my employees uh, for next week. Um, you can actually request time off for people. Um, it'll show, you can click and go straight to, hey, this person has a time off request. Um, this one's already been approved, so I 
that's when I can submit, I can cancel it from here, um, but it's not an actual uh, needing to be approved request. You can request time off for an employee, um, and their balances are here. So if you need to request the time off for them, if you do that kind of entry, you can pick the employee that's, that you need it for, and you can select the time off button, <clears throat> and you can do that for them. Uh, additionally, under My Team is Employment. Uh, you can go to Employment Profile, which uh, will show basically the employee, the seniority date, the full time. There's not a lot of data there, but it's, it's all we're kind of exposing right now. Time off, um, you can go to List of Requests. So what I have here is I have uh, two pending time off requests, as you see here. There's a pending time off request. Uh, and then there's request history if you want to see old ones. So you can approve, you can deny. You can also go into, let's go with uh, this first one. So here's Marsha's. Um, it's kind of not fitting into my screen, but the balances are on this page again, which makes it really nice. You can see everything right there. Uh, you can see that she's got three days of sick, and she's going to a uh, dentist. So I'm going to go ahead and prove that. <clears throat> uh, it's been approved. I'm going to close out, and then I'm going to go to Elisa's here, and she's asking for three days. And she wants to start on the 22nd. And I'm like, wait a minute, didn't I just approve Marsha? Um, oh, so she submitted, and it it shows you where there's a clash. If you look here, Marsha has already requested sick time on the 22nd. I'm like, oh, OK. Um, so I don't want her gone on the 22nd because we have a very busy day, and somebody had already requested time off for that day. So I can actually say, I approve these three days, but not this one. Um, once you hit process instead of approve, it will actually say partial approval. Uh, instead of the whole thing being approved. I believe they'll be on top here. They're not. So uh, what it does is it, when it notifies the employee, it notifies it as a partial approval. And that way you can kind of say, hey, you can write comments in there if you want and say, uh, somebody had already re requested some time off, so I could only approve these three days. Can we make the adjustment or however you want to handle that? Um, time off balances. So you can pick your employees. We will go through the search function here in a second. Um, but you will be able to see your balances for each one of your employees right here. And um, now the request time off is just like the one we were looking at before. It's the calendar. Um, so either way you want to look at that screen, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, personal information, you can see personal information for each one of your employees. It is fairly limited. Uh, here's the, this one here is the uh, personal information. This one here is the work information. Um, you have to generate a report for it so it doesn't pop up right away. It just basically gives you a listing for the employee. Um, it, it's not an on-screen report. But let's go to time and attendance, which is something we'll have to do a lot. So you're going to go up when you log in and go to My Team, Time and Attendance. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, individual time card is usually the best and most accurate way. Uh, some of us go for speed and, and when we have a lot. But this particular one, it'll pull up the employee. OK. <clears throat> so it'll pull up the employee. and as you can see here, uh, the holiday. Um, currently, holidays need, it says supervisor approval required. Um, as a practice, we go through and approve holidays for people that we already know are supposed to be approved. So uh, sometimes, if it's not taken care of by the supervisor, we'll take care of it. Uh, and each day, I'm looking at, OK, uh, this looks good. It is broken up by week. So if I click this here. Um, it only picks this week. All right. 
Um, I thought there was a button for the whole thing on this side, but there's not, so you can do week by week. Or this um, upgrade is approved time card. So if you scroll through and you say, okay, this looks right, this looks right, her totals look right, everything looks good, you can look at her totals here as well. Uh, you can see she's got eight holiday, 72 regular, 80.75, and half an hour of overtime. Okay, that's right for me. Um, you can ask also, you know, divide it by weeks if you really need to know the details of each week. So we'll go back to the time card and go back up to this approved time card button. You can actually click on that button and it'll improve, approve the entire time card for you. Uh, so you no longer have to pick certain days or each week or just click that top one and approve. When you click on this approved time card button, it will go ahead and approve the entire time card. It tells you the dates you're approving it for. And this is a bit slower than the approval of last time. But overall, it, the functionality of the system is much, much better. OK. Uh, instead of individual time cards, um, there are group time cards. And this basically will show your team in a different listing. It's by days, which it can be a little difficult because it's only day by day. Uh, if you went in every day and you wanted your people to clock in every day, this would be a little bit more helpful because you could just say, okay, the day looks right and I approve this entire day. It does not do the entire time card for your entire group altogether. Um, if we go back, here's a screen that I wanted to show everyone because when we are processing parallel, a lot of you will get notifications that say, hey, this person's not approved. Um, and you're like, wait a minute, I already approved that person. So this screen right here is something you can see that will actually, it will tell you what the situation is for each one of these people. Now, overtime hours found, it's not one that has to be approved. Um, supervisor approval required fields, it's basically every line item. As you can see for Marsha, I already approved her time. Hers is blank except for this one. She's fine. Supervisor, supervisor approval needed, it's right here. It'll take me to her time card. It'll show me, hey, all these lines, they're just normal lines, they need to be approved, you need to review and approve. These red ones, payrolls cannot be processed when there's a red one. <coughs> I intentionally had Josh do this for me. Basically, he didn't punch out. So it's like, wait a minute, we can't pay him. It looks like he missed something. His normal schedule is till four, I see that he missed that. I don't want him to not get paid for those additional three and a half hours. So I'm going to go in there and fix that for him, or I'm going to ask him to go in there and fix it. And then on top of that, you can see right above that, he's also got 17 that require approval. That'll just take me back to his time card. And I need to approve all of these statements. He entered sick time. Okay. And then you can look at his totals as well. So this right here, Next to his, when we look at the group totals, you can see, wait a minute, there's something wrong with his entry. I need to go in there. Um, on some of you, this will fit in your screen a whole lot better. Uh, mine, I have to scroll quite a bit to see all of the totals. Uh, but I have seen on other monitors where it's, it, it fits uh, and you can see everything. <laughs> all right. So back to this one. Um, the holiday list is there. These schedules, an actual versus schedule and monthly schedule. Some of you use schedules, some of you do not. If you would like to add schedules for certain individuals, what that does is, hey, my people usually work eight to four, eight to five, nine to six, whatever. Uh, you can actually have these created. Um, from what we reviewed, you may have the ability to create 
the schedules for them. The employees cannot create them on their own. What that does is if you have a schedule for an employee and you say, okay, your schedule is 8 to 4.30, you can actually hit the actual versus scheduled button and what it'll do, it'll do a comparison from what they actually entered to what their schedule was. I don't use schedules, but it would come up here and, the, and this line down here would actually show what the schedule was and this shows the actual, so you could actually do a comparison and see what the differences are. Um, that's just a way to, to kind of do a monitor of, of what hours are working compared to what hours they're supposed to be working. Um, the monthly schedule is just a monthly picture of that. Like I said, I don't use schedules for my employees. This is time already entered and approved. If it's green like this, it's already been approved. So you can see that there's sick time and vacation time, and that's actually different from what you scheduled because obviously we we normally are, are it's not a normal work day. So that will show you any variances or differences. The holiday list is the same as we saw before uh, when we were looking at the employee level. Uh, the attendance, it's something that I my team doesn't really have any of. So it's not there, sorry. All right, so um, time off, we did that, yeah. covered all of how to do multiples. Uh, I, I went through kind of quick because I wanted to have some open time for questions. And again, I'll answer, I, uh, I think I can stay on as long as I can, um, And but you're more than welcome to contact uh, us.peril directly. So let me unmute the line here. All right, I believe I've unmuted the line. The leader has turned lecture off, and your line has been Any unmuted. That we can address. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward system once you learn the UI, but the user interface is definitely a little different. Yeah, I've only got one of my employees in there, and I'm not even in there, so I'm apparently going to have to call you guys and get set up. You only see one of them. Now, there was some uh, question as to, like, direct reports and the way you see them as compared to ones that are listed as time and attendance. So yes, please, any issues like that, call us directly or email us. And we're, we're getting on those quickly, obviously, because we got to process payroll. And we it's, it's going to delay not just you, but it'll delay us. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I'm sure I'll have questions once I see my employees. But if I can't see them, I can't give That's any right. questions. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can. Uh, and we are here, and, and we are all hands on deck uh, for the next today and Monday and Tuesday. And, and if anybody has anything, please feel free to contact us. Yeah, now we're, uh, who, who are we emailing? us.peril at colliers.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.